Yes, a very good morning to all of you. Right, so we completed with SQC 1 and SA220, right, which talked about the quality control system, right. So, SQC 1 quality control for firms, right. So, the standard is applicable to the entire firm that may perform audit review of historical financial information and the other assurance and the related services engagement. Whereas, SA220 is applicable for a particular audit of an financial statements, right. So, SA220 quality control for an audit of financial statements right so sqc1 talks about the qcpp what is qcpp the quality control policies and procedures it talks about the quality control system in the ca firm and then we discussed what are the elements of this quality control system what are the elements yes of the quality control system it is the lehem yes leadership responsibility for quality within the firm then the ethical requirements including the independence then acceptance continuance of the client relationship then the human resources then the engagement performance and last one is the monitoring right so these are the elements of the quality control system why sqc1 what are the objectives of sqc1 there are two objectives one that the firm complies with the pslr what is PSLR? Professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement. And second, that the reports issued by the firm are appropriate in these circumstances. Because ultimately, what is the deliverable of the firm? The reports being issued. So, whether the reports issued are they appropriate in these circumstances. Right. So, first requirement of SQC 1 is that you identify a leader. Right, an experienced, stable person who you entrust the responsibility for the leadership. Then after the leadership role has been identified, then you have designed policies and procedures in your firm to ensure compliance with the ethical requirements including the independence. Right, There should be policies and procedures in the firm to identify whether there are any threats to the independence of the auditor. If threats have been identified, whether they can be reduced to an acceptable level by putting the adequate safeguards and if you cannot reduce them yes or you cannot eliminate those threats then in that case it says ca you need to withdraw from the engagement right so that is ethical requirements including the independence then after that third one the acceptance continuance of the client relationship right you don't just accept any client or you don't just you know okay going on going on continuing with the audit no Every time you need to wait for a moment, think okay, whether I should continue with this client or whether I should accept this new client and then proceed further. And so when you have to decide upon the acceptance continuance of the client relationship, you need to look into three things. One, you need to check into the, yes, one, you need to look into the, yes, the integrity of the client. Right? Is the client like Ram or Ravan? Right? Is the client like Krishna or Kans? Right? So, you need to check the integrity of the client. What is their reputation? What is their attitude? What is the nature of operation? Are they involved in the money laundering criminal activities? Are they trying to keep your fee as low as possible? Are they inappropriately limiting the scope of your audit? Why they are so keen on appointing you and not reappointing the previous auditor? And your knowledge regarding the integrity of the client will increase with your ongoing relationship with the client. Right? So, first one, what you need Need to check whether you have the right whether you need to check whether the client has the integrity because for ca first ethical requirement is integrity so for client also first thing we want is the integrity then once you say integrity very good but now you need to check whether you have the whether you have the CCTR, that is the competence, capability, time and resources to perform the engagement. Okay, do you have the knowledge of the industry? Do you have the knowledge of the regulatory requirement which are applicable to the client? Do you have the sufficient, per sufficient personnel in your firm? Are experts available if needed? Is EQCR available? Right, And whether you will be able to meet the deadline? Right, within which the audit is to be, the engagement is to be completed. Only then accept. Otherwise, it says, again, no accepting the engagement. And third one, whether you can comply with the ethical requirements. Right, so one, you need to check the integrity. Second, you need to check whether you have the CCTR, competence, capability, time and resources. Then third one, you need to check whether you will be able to comply with the ethical requirements, including the independence. You can't comply, again, no question of accepting the client or continuing the client relationship.
okay right so that's an important question over there the acceptance continuance of the client relationships and the engagement okay then after l e a we had the h which is regarding the human resources that is the sufficient personnel in the firm which will ensure that the firm complies with the pslr and the reports issued are appropriate in these circumstances that means there should be policies and procedures in the firm regarding the recruitment then the compensation the performance evaluation the career development needs the training of the personnel right so policies and procedures the hr policies and procedures should be there right so that is the human in resources then we came to the biggest part of the discussion in sqc1 that is the e the engagement performance right under engagement performance we talked about under engagement performance we talked about the five points what were the five points first point there should be proper dsr what is dsr direction supervision review direction towards the start of the engagement supervision during the engagement and review towards the end of the engagement okay right then after that what did we say there should be the eqcr right engagement quality control review listed entities eqcr compulsory others it is left at the discretion of the firm right the work of one ca being evaluated by another ca in the same form before the report is issued so they will look into all the significant matters all the significant judgments in the audit so that is eqcr third whether there are policies and procedures in the firm that you can take the you can take the consultation for the difficult contentious matters that means you can use the work of an expert whether within the firm or outside the firm then fourth part in the engagement performance is that there should be proper engagement there should be proper engagement documentation right the assembly of the final audit file should be completed within not more than 60 days after the date of the audit report it says it is merely an administrative process you cannot perform any new procedures you cannot reach any new audit conclusions right administrative work you can do during this assembly of the final audit file and this audit file you need to retain for not less than 7 years from the date of the audit report or from the date of the group auditor report and then this engagement documentation is the property of the firm audit documentation is the property of the auditor he may at his discretion make portions or extracts from his working paper available to the client provided it does not does not undermine the validity of the work performed or the independence of the auditor or of his personnel right so client is saying oh auditor we gave you copy of the minutes of the meeting but we have lost our copy so can you give us the copy which is there in your uh, working paper so auditor may at his discretion right make portions or extracts from his working papers available to the client without undermining the validity of work performed so client is telling ca can you share the working paper regarding how you calculated materiality or how you select the sample then you say no 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 that working paper i cannot give it to you right that working paper i cannot provide right so it is at his discretion right so that is engagement documentation and what was the fifth point in engagement performance it was the yes it was the differences of opinion yes it was regarding the differences of opinion who is fighting cats and dogs right the team senior article manager engagement partner expert eqcr all are fighting with each other what does sqc1 say that the report should be issued only after the resolution of the differences of opinion report not to be released till the matter has been resolved right so all differences of opinion need to be resolved before the report is issued so that is the differences of opinion right so under engagement performance we had the five points what are the five points over there dsr eqcr consultation engagement documentation and the differences of the opinion right dsr eqcr consultation engagement documentation and the differences of the opinion okay right eqcr right who can be an eqcr another partner in the firm or a member of the icai right other employee of the firm or it could be the suitably qualified external person that is mainly for the sole practitioner or the small firm or it could be an eqcr team but that eqcr team has to be headed by a member of the institute 
right so articles won't do over there it has to be headed by a member of the institute okay and when this eqcr uncle is going to do the review of the file what is the uncle going to look into right yesterday we talked about two reviews eqcr review and dsr review right so eqcr review is the uncle going to check the matters relating to the independence right independence the engagement team's evaluation of independence is the eqcr uncle going to check yes right then selected audit documentation selected working papers will the uncle check yes then matters communicated to tcwg yes then significant risks identified then materiality how the materiality has been determined then the responses to the assessed risk then the corrected and the uncorrected misstatements then the matters on which consultations have been taken and the appropriateness of the report to be issued right and the appropriateness of the report to be issued so rather for eqcr review we had made a list of the standards to whom we can make a reference to like you know we said sa 200 230 260 then 315 320 330 30, then the 450 and then 620 and the 700 right 620 and the 700 that is the eqcr review and then we have the work of a less experienced team member being reviewed by a more experienced team member so that is the normal review right so that is the dsr review direction supervision review review right so that review what does it say in the review they will check whether work is done as you wish or whether the work has been done as per the yes whether the work has been done as per the PSLR the professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement then when the work is done as per the PSLR whether there are any significant matters which have been identified right then those significant matters for those whether you have taken the consult consultation then based on the consultation whether there is a need to revise the nature timing and extent of the work performed then whatever work you perform whether it is supported by the conclusions reach right then conclusions reach whether you have the sufficient appropriate evidence for the same and whether that evidence has been documented right so this is what will be checked in the review right so two important questions which you need to know over here is eqcr review and dsr review eqcr is that uncle who is not a part of your engagement team but he is doing a quality check of the file and review is the work of a less experienced team member being reviewed by a more experienced team member right should the eqcr be involved in the conduct of the audit or in the making of the decisions in the audit it says at all cost there should be no interference of the eqcr but can the engagement partner consult him wherever required it says yes on exception basis you can consult him but basically there should be no interference of the eqcr why because we want an objective evaluation of the significant judgments right then what is the responsibility of the engagement partner he has to ensure that an eqcr has been appointed right then he needs to check the significant matters which have been discussed with the eqcr and not to date the audit report till the completion of the eqcr right not to date the audit report till the completion of the eqcr okay right so that was our discussion on the engagement performance and then we came to the discussion on the monitoring right monitoring is what it is the toc it is the control testing that whether the controls have been suitably designed and appropriately implemented right whether the controls are operating effectively whether the new developments in professional legal regulatory requirements have they been considered in the quality control system right then after that it says whether there is any non compliance whether any complaints have been received right regarding the non compliance any allegation then what is the remedial action taken and also the action taken for the deficiency or the non compliance in the quality control system right so that was regarding the monitoring okay then one more question which we had seen in the question bank was regarding complaints and allegation right so complaints and allegation could be regarding that oh the firm is not doing the work as per the pslr or their quality control system is not good the control could be from within the firm or it could be from outside the firm then it says the firm should have the clearly defined channels regarding to whom the complaint can be made right then after the complaint is received it has to be addressed by the appropriate authority right the person the responsibility has to be assigned it should be a person who is not a part of the engagement 
right and then based on the investigation the actions are required to be taken right the appropriate action is required to be taken right so once in your exams there has been a question regarding the complaints and allegations okay right so that completed our discussion on sqc 1 and then we came to the discussion on the sa 220 right sa 220 it's a miniature version of sqc one right sa 220 says it is the quality control for an audit right so obviously if applicable to the entire firm each audit done by that firm also the standard will be applicable so sqc1 sa220 if i compare their objectives what does it say sqc1 that the firm complies with the PSLR and the firm's reports issued are appropriate in these circumstances. Whereas SA220, it says that the audit complies with the PSLR and the audit report issued are they appropriate in these circumstances. Are you understanding that? The audit complies with the PSLR and the audit reports issued are they appropriate in these circumstances. And again in SA220, we have the leader, right? But for the entire firm, who is the leader? The CEO, the managing partner, the senior most partner of the firm is the leader. For a particular audit, who is the leader? For a particular audit, who is the hero? Who is the leader? It is the engagement partner. Exactly. Right? It is the engagement partner. So, you have to inform the client okay, who is the engagement partner. Right? Then you also have to inform the engagement partner that you have been interested with this responsibility. Or engagement partner says, oh, I don't know what I was responsible for. Right? So, it says the leadership has to be identified. And now what is the responsibility of the leader to ensure compliance with the QCPP, with the quality control system. Right? Then also raise the concerns without the fear of the reprisal. Right? So, all that is the responsibility of the leader. Then again, responsibility of the leader to ensure compliance with the ethical requirements including independence. Then leader, engagement partner, you also need to check for acceptance continuance. Acceptance continuance again Ram or Ravan and you know, integrity then after that the CCTR competence capability time and resources then after that they talk about the right, the ethical requirements whether you can comply with the ethical requirements and last one any significant matters which were identified in the current or the previous audit engagement right so that is regarding the acceptance continuance then human resources ah yeah pay human resources you're not talking about all the 4000 CEs working in your firm you're talking about the 70 members of your engagement team Right, so human resources over here becomes the assignment of the engagement team. Right, whether you have the engagement team which is competent, capable and committed to the ethical principles right, to ensure compliance with the objectives. Right, so that is assignment of the engagement team. Then again, engagement performance in which we say there should be DSR, there should be EQCR, consultation should be taken for difficult contentious matters and then it says differences of opinion to be resolved as per SQC1. And what does SQC1 say? That you need to resolve the differences of opinion before the report is issued and if you are not able to resolve them then it says you further refer the matter to any another practitioner or another firm or to a regulatory or a legal body right to a regulatory or to a legal body so that is the engagement performance and last one is nothing but the monitoring right then after that we saw the huge question bank you know the test your understanding integrated case scenario and your test your knowledge for sqc1 and sa220 and then we also had a small small paragraphs regarding three topics over there peer review quality review and the nafra right peer review Right, what did we say? Practice unit, reviewer and the peer review board. What is peer review? It is an examination of the systems and procedures at the practice unit, which is done by the reviewer. And what does the reviewer want to check? That whether the practice unit, whether it complies with the technical, ethical and the professional standards and also to ensure the quality of assurance services. Right? So, compliance with the TEP, Technical Ethical Professional Standards and also to ensure the quality of assurance services. 
and then the reviewer issues the unmodified report to the peer review board and then they issue the peer review certificate to the practice unit but in case if the reviewer has the findings then he issues a qualified report and then the peer review board may order a follow on review to be conducted after 6 months to 1 year right so that was peer review right which is facilitated by the icai then you have the quality review which is facilitated by the central government Right, where central government is given the power under section 28a of the chartered accountants act right so quality review what does it say audit form under review the technical reviewer and then you have the quality review board right the quality review board right so what are the functions of the qrb the quality review board to make recommendations to the council to review the quality of the services of the members and to suggest the measures for the improvement Right? So, that is the role of the quality review board. And then what does it say? Quality review board. Can any matters be referred by the NAFRA to the quality review board? Yes. Right? NAFRA can tell that quality review board, please you check this CA firm, you check this auditor or so. Right? So, that is an area, so quality review board. And then you have the NFRA, section 130. Two of the Companies Act 2013, which talks about the constitution of the NFRA, which is going to regulate certain classes of companies and their auditors. Right? So, certain classes of companies and their auditors. So, what is covered by NAFRA that won't be looked into by the Quality Review Board unless and until specifically the NAFRA has passed on the matter to the Quality Review Board. And then again, what is the role of the NFRA to make recommendations right, regarding the issuance of the auditing accounting standards. Then also to check compliance right, with the auditing accounting standards and also take the measures for the improvement. Right, suggest the measures for the improvement. Improvement. Right. So, for these three, peer review, quality review and NFRA, you have to understand ke what are these institutions and then what is their role or objective. Right. That is simply what you need to know. So, either in the MCQ or a four mark question could be coming in your exam. Okay, right. So, that has made our list of standards that we have completed to 25. Right. So, we've completed with the 25 standards. Also, chapter number one, quality control is done over there. And then we hopped to our module two. And in module two, we came to chapter number 13, which is regarding the group audits. And what did I say? It's its old wine, new bottle. In the same old chapter, what is the same old chapter? Audit of consolidated financial statements, but only now in a new name and a new packaging now called as the group audit over there. And then we had an initial discussion, ki kya hai? what is this group audit and all that. Right, so first we tried to get some understanding of the terminology, wherein we said parent company component. Component means what? Subsidiary, associate, joint venture. Right, so parent company and component. Then parent company auditor, component auditor. Component auditor could be the same auditor as that of the parent company or it could be a different auditor. If it is a different auditor, then in that case you need to apply SA 600 using the work of another auditor. Right. So, here what do we talk about? The audit of the consolidated financial statements. ICAI has issued a guidance note on the audit of the consolidated financial statements. I showed you the PDF yesterday. Based on that, this chapter has been developed. Right. Based on that, this chapter has been prepared. Right. So, you have to do the audit of the consolidated balance sheet, consolidated PNL, consolidated cash flow, consolidated statement of changes in equity, and the notes. Right. The notes to all the consolidated financial statements right so again what is the responsibility of the auditor to express an opinion on the true and fair view of the consolidated state of affairs right consolidated results and so right so objective of the auditor to express an opinion on the true and fair view and check whether consolidated financial statements have they been prepared in accordance with the AFRF right so the AS or the NDS which is applicable to the entity Okay, right. So, this is up to where we have discussed so far.